let's talk 200 miles an hour. I believe Ferrari was the first one to hit 200 miles an hour, and it was in this car. Well, if there's two things I've learned the hard way, it's one is that if a manufacturer claims something, wait until it's proven. And two, if you're ever hired to commit a murder, make sure you get paid up front. And this <laughs> car is one of those cars that I would have definitely wanted to get paid up front because they did a bunch of tests on this car and everybody continuously says this is a 200 mile an hour car and it came up short. They did multiple tests on it, and they've never hit 200 with this car. None of them None ever? None of them have ever hit 200 miles an hour. It's a 199-mile-an-hour car. And <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Maybe, maybe you, slight you, downhill. You deal with it, right? Yeah, looking for some downhill action. But as far as when it came out, yeah. I mean, there's no question when the F40 came out. I remember I was watching drag racing on TV, and it was such an amazing car that on drag racing on TV, a famous football player had gotten one and drove it to the racetrack. So they break away from racing to show this F40 at the racetrack. Wow. It was that big of a deal. Oh, I mean, this car is. was just <laughs> gigantic in its era, yeah. and it still is. I mean, it's like it's like the 1969 Camaros. I mean, they, it will always be a cool car to have. Yeah. But honestly, it's not as quick as everyone says that. Well, it's not as quick now as things are now. I mean, you take, and I hate to say this, but a 458 is faster than an F40. I mean, it is. You know, well, it's got more horsepower, but I think this is like one of the last true cars too that, well, maybe not one of the last, but it required a driver. Whereas the cars nowadays can pretty much drive themselves oh, without, without even and, there. And it's funny because we, I, I like to take the wife out in the 458, and the car's got a few year old tires on it, so they're a little harder than they should be. But I, the, I love that about it because oh, you can yeah. shut all the traction control off. And I always leave the place, and I do like a little slight drift when we leave, and all the valet guys always watch because they know Patrick's going to leave with the Ferrari <laughs> and he's going to do this little drift out of the road. And you can do that with the car because the car's really controllable, real docile, just real, and everything's finger trip controls. I mean, you can super control the car. Yeah. Whereas this car, and this is a real race car. This car, if you got, if you drive around in this in the road for a while, it's like being beaten to death by canned goods. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I it's absolutely it's really just a brutal car. They call it a 30 minute car. Right. You get in it, drive it for 30 minutes and you want the hell out of it. In part, what that's due to is the fact that this was such a stripped down car. Now, Ferraris around this time were considered starting to become considered very comfortable and comfy cars and not really enthusiast cars. And so that's what Enzo was doing with this car to make it as raw as a car as possible. No radios, the, the first 50 units produced only had Lexan windows in them. So we're talking bare carbon fiber, aluminum and Kevlar as well. So and no, that's gonna make for a stiff ride. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I would, I would prefer to have one of the first 50 cars with the Lexan slide windows. Really? I know it would be, I know it would be awful, but at the same time, <laughs> when you drive this car, you're not dry. I mean, it's got AC in it, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a great way to, you know, they, they were thinking ahead to care enough about you that, but it would be still, who's driving through a drive-through with their F40? You're not doing it. You know I mean? <laughs> I never put the windows down in my 458. I've got the AC going, I drive along, I go up to valet, I get out and away I go. But it'd just be cool to just see that Lexan when the thing drives up because that, you know, the sliding Lexan, because yeah. that's just a real cool thing. It's got a huge tire on it. Oh, ginormous yeah, tire. Absolutely. Pirelli it's, P0s. It was back in, it was in the mid 80s. They, were, they did this race called the Silver State Classic. And there was a there was a guy in a Testarossa and he achieved speeds past 150 miles an hour with the car for a long in, long period of time and the tire blows off the car wow. car flies out into the into the desert and just really gets in trouble and that's when the people really started paying attention to speed ratings on cars mm. because in in that class that silver state classic deal they, they had and i'm trying to remember this the best i can but they had all of a sudden whoa holy crap what's going on okay so now we've got to start paying attention to what tires these guys have on these cars because these cars are reaching amazing speeds and that's the thing with this car pirelli designed a tire for this car made out of Kevlar. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah Kevlar, which, was, pretty crazy. which was cool because, I mean, you're, you're, you're putting some forethought into people because this car is one of those cars that I know that people didn't just set around with it. They took it to the track and messed around with it. There's tons because of it, photos that show that. Because it's not a super tweaked, detailed car. I mean, you take like a a Bugatti or a Pagani or anything like that, and you walk up to it, and you just don't feel worthy. But when you, when, when you walk up to this, you... It looks like a race car. It's painted like a race car. It's yeah. detailed like a race car. It looks like it, a couple of rock chips isn't going to hurt the value of it. Right. So people will go out and beat on it. As a matter of fact, that kind of stuff I'll bring to you. Cue whiskey girl.
Now, speaking of that, paint chips and stuff like that from Rocks, <laughs> the, one of the cool things about this, too, is that even down to the paint, they were talking about how they put thin coats of paint on these cars, and you can actually see the carbon weave coming through the paint uh, when you look at it at certain angles, and that's what a lot of um, collectors look at, that if, if you can't see that weave coming through the paint, it's because it's likely been repainted could be from rock chips or something else, but just kind of a neat neat feature. They went all the way down to the paint. And they did that on the F50, too. I mean, if you take a look at this, if you look real close to this photo of an F50, you can see that weave in the paint. So if you were to scuff this up, you can't get that weave back. No. I mean, that's, that's gone for that's good. Yep. The, they were trying to keep the car as light as they possibly could because, as probably everybody knows, the F40 is really just an evolution of the 288 GTO, which was the 288 GTO Evolution. Easy. The racing series got killed, so they said, hey, we got to do something with this 288 Evolution, so they made the F40. Yeah. But the F40 was always, and I hate to say this because I'm going to make some Ferrari guys mad, uh -oh. the F40, they were always scared of that 959 Porsche. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. That, that yeah. 959 was going to be in the same class as that 288 Evolution. Now, that 288 Evolution was going to be a fast car, but I yeah. don't know how fast it was going to be because when they ran that 959, well, they ran a – Ferrari had a track day where they invited – the, some 959s out to Fiorano, and mm. then they, invite, they had a couple of their F40s there, and they both ran them around the racetrack at Fiorano. And the news people that were there said, hey, all the journalists said, hey, great cars, both of them, but honestly, the 959 is a better car. Mm. But, you know, it's... It's a technology it's, test bed. I don't it, think they're comparable. And I completely agree, because I, I don't think that you can say it's a better car. They really should have said it's a different car. Yeah. Because it's a completely different driving experience. Because when I go out... And if I really want to have a nice, comfortable riding experience, I'll hop in a Rolls Royce. But when I want to go out and have a good time, man, nothing better than a Boss 429 Mustang. You know what I mean? Good times, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Sure. So they, they were probably not comparing what it was built for. It was built, built to enjoy the driving yeah. experience, whereas the 959 was it, – it, I don't, I don't want to criticize the 959, but at the same time, it's not playing the same game. I look, yeah, they're completely different yeah, to me. Yeah, it's, it's, so, To me, it's almost, and I know they're both race cars, but the F40 is more of a raw, you know, enthusiast race car, where, whereas the 959, although fast and, you know, it's, it's technology. That was such an advancement in all different things technology-wise. You know, like you said, you can't compare the two. Uh, yeah. It had power windows and radios yeah. and oh, everything yeah, like yeah. that Compl where the F40 completely did. Completely different type of a deal. Do, do you hear an alarm going off? Hey, there's a picture of me sliding around with a wife on the way out to dinner. <laughs> that era is like my favorite era of Formula One, where the cars, you slid them around. That's how they went around the racetrack. And this F40 is the same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a car that you have to muscle it around. You have no, to throw totally. it around. You have, And you have to know how to throw one of these cars around. Because if you don't, <laughs> the car's going to, it's gone. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a real dangerous thing. And you were talking about, Tony, Tony and I had a few to drink last night at the bar. You can tell I'm a little beat up today. But we had the that 288 Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Same type of a deal. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I mean, that's that car was just such a big influence and it was a test bed. And as I understood it, the 288, actually, neat, neat fact really, is that the F40 was over five times, almost five times as much as the 288 was when it came the, out as far as price wise. So 400,000 was the original MSRP on the F40, which the last car was the 288 GTO. And it was like around what eighty eighty thousand or so. Um, that kind 80, of money. Yeah. So it was five times more than the last its wow. predecessor, which I think is crazy. That's but, a massive jump. So the the two eighty eight GTO went into racing, and they had this Evolution, but they had a bunch of uh, a handful of cars laying around after that became just for customers that they sold to customers. Well, that two eighty eight GTO Evolution was a test bed for the F forty, and if you look at the pictures. You can see so much F40 in there, and they just took all kinds of styling cues from it. 
Um, and I think it's like the, from the NACA ducks all the way down to the different vents that are on it. So really, really cool looking. The, the 288 of a Luzion, if you've ever seen one of those things, I mean, it's probably it's probably the, one of the most, short of lighting yourself on fire and running through a meth lab, this is probably the most dangerous thing ever. Yeah. I mean, there, that car is, it was super light, super, super fast, had a killer coefficient of drag because they really worked on that car. Mm. And speaking of coefficient of drag, I was really surprised because back in the 80s, the, the Lamborghini Countach, everybody mm. says, oh, wow, look how sleek and aero it was. The thing had a .42 coefficient of drag, same as the Plymouth Duster. Yeah. And this thing was a 3.4, which was a crazy yeah. low number. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that... Well, the GTO or the F40? The F40 was oh, 3.4. Wow. I, I heard mean, it wasn't I, that good. I mean, just because of the, it was like an open, um, uh, back where the engine compartment was, it was all open, so that added to the drag, but, but I think they did it on that, but three four, three four is really good for a street car of any type. I mean, that's a that's a really good number. I mean, it's a seven thousand RPM engine, so it's you, mm -hmm. you can beat on it all day long. You're never going to wear valve springs out. I don't know how you would ever wear this engine out. It doesn't seem to be able to hurt itself the well, way that. It, the turbos can wear it, the IHI twin turbos that are oh, in there. Yeah, yeah. They, they need to be rebuilt. We've been lucky enough to rebuild <laughs> yeah, some of those before. We've done those F40 turbos before. Cool. Yeah, for those IHIs. Yeah, those are. And but the the engine itself. Super reliable. Doesn't it doesn't spin nine grand? And I love my nine thousand RPM four five eight. But these things at seven sound stunning. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a fantastic sounding engine. Two point nine liter. I was surprised that it was as slow as it was at Fiorano. I mean, they had it. They, I've looked at all the track times on stuff, and the the. F40 ran a 129.6 at Fiorano, and then the F50 was two and a half seconds faster wow. than the F40. Oh, and then naturally the, aspirated, no the, turbo lag. I'm yeah, sure this thing had a ton of turbo lag. The 458 was two seconds a lap faster than a F50. Wow. And wow. the 458 was two tenths quicker than a Maserati MC12, my favorite wow. car of all yeah. time. Just uh, the, so, other, the other Enzo. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it was faster than that. So it's the technology, you can see it advancing, you can see it advancing. It was a little disturbing that the MC12 did get beat by the 458, but honestly, I, I don't care. It, it gets to the point where after a while, you really don't care how fast something is. Mm -hmm. I would take an MC12 over about anything, but it would be tough to decide between an F40 and an MC12 because there's mm. something about the F40 that is absolutely yeah. crazy iconic that everyone knows it. It's a legend. Yeah, it is. It's Loyalty. legendary. It's, Automotive it is, royalty. It is legendary. Because, and that's it. I think that if you had an MC12 in your collection, you'd have to have a bunch of other stuff. Oh, but, of course. But if you had an F40, that could be your collection. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Totally. And I think that's crazy because they talk about with this car, originally they were only supposed to make 400. And I've heard upwards of 1,300, over 1,300 cars they actually produced for this, which they say all left the, the factory in Rosso Corsa Red, one. Two, they all were right, or sorry, left-hand drive. And they also, uh, from this, the requirements for the U.S., so I, this makes me wonder how, what, which car they use for testing. The U.S. cars were known to have higher horsepower than the European variants. They said because of the safety features on the U.S. car, so it had bigger bumpers or uh, the bottom splitter came out farther, uh -huh. it added more weight to the car. So Ferrari's answer to adding more weight to the car was to give it more horsepower. And they've been known to have 500 to 515 horsepower, whereas the European variants had 471. I had always suspected that so because they were kicking out some numbers with that car. Because you know me, I'm a numbers guy. I mm -hmm. build racing components and carburetors and stuff like that all the time. So I always, I can do most of that stuff in my head. And I was running some of the numbers from some of the reports. And I said, well, that doesn't come out to 478 horsepower. It's way higher than that. That doesn't right. match. Something's wrong. Either somebody really is terrible at testing or there's something getting skewed. But you realize in a boosted engine, a couple of pounds of boost is all it takes. Sure. You, know, you just kick it up a little tweak bit. Tweak it a little bit. So, I mean, it makes me wonder what those numbers were based off when they tested mm -hmm. them. Maybe maybe it was a U.S. car that went 200 or something. Who knows? But uh, I thought that was a quick, cool little fact because they, they really don't do that anymore. You don't get a car from a manufacturer that actually produces more horsepower than they say that much more, typically. Yeah. 40, 30, 40 horsepower more. All right. Well, I'm excited about this car. I want to hear some numbers from you. I hear a squealing noise. Really buy 
biased about the F40 because I grew up in that era. To me, when that car came out, it was the most stunning, amazing thing ever. But it did age with me. I mean, in, in like the 69 Camaros of the era, that's what basically what this is to me. I, I don't know really how to style this without being influenced. I'm going to let Tony give me his number. I'm going to work off of that, and I'm going to see where we go. What are you thinking on this? Well, part? I mean, this also influenced me because you said you, you, know, you grew up with it, uh, and technically I did because when they started this project, it was a few days after I had just graced the earth with my presence. So already, <laughs> you know, they had this plan for me. So I, I feel like this car was built for me, so I'm going to have to give it some really good styling ratings on this because it's got the iconic wedge shape, it's, I think it's like we talked about, aut automotive royalty, legendary, if you will. So I actually gave this a pretty high styling rating. Um, and I know it might throw you off, but Lexan window in the back, totally cool. You can see the motor, you can open it up, see everything that's there. Gated shifter, carbon Kevlar. Not sure how much he's had to drink. Go. Um, so anyway, so what I would give this car as far as a styling rating, I'm going to give it a 75. <laughs> Wow, he's going to need some clean urine before he goes back to work. That's really <laughs> crazy. Is it? Is That's it? so... No, you can't... It's a it's a great car, don't get me wrong, but it it's still very, very... It's not timeless styling. No? It's, no, not it's the not. wedge shape? You don't it's, think the wedge shape is It's now? cool, but it's not. It's still... That car, and I've talked about this before, where Lamborghini maximizes every design for the era. That did the same thing. They hmm. took that 308 body, maximized everything out of it, but it's really locked into that era. Okay. So I didn't give it a poor rating. I didn't give it an amazing rating. I gave it a 60. Okay, so I'm, I mean, I'm 15. Okay, so if I lowered it down to a 72, would you feel more comfortable with that? I wouldn't require a drug test, that's for sure. Um, the performance, though, is one that I, I'm a little bothered by because mm -hmm. I agree with you that I think that in some applications it did kick out 470-ish horsepower, and in some it was much higher. So it, I originally had given it a 50 for a performance rating, but I'll bet you that there are versions out there that were in the 500-ish horsepower rating, so I'm going to move it up to 55. Okay. Yeah, no, we're yeah. right in line because I gave it a 53 because oh, to good. me, I didn't base it off of that. I think it's really cool. Twin turbo, awesome, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, a, kind of a dog. But for this day, that was a very high horsepower car. Fantastic car. All right. Yep. Great job, Ferrari. You got a toast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And you know what they say if you have an opinion that's different than ours, keep it to yourself. yourself.